<laughs> Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started, although I am just loving the chatter of all of these sweet children here. You have just improved this meeting just by coming and sitting here at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead um, and get started. It is um, Thursday, January 16th um, at 5.30 p.m., and we are meeting in the boardroom on Leg at Legacy, what is it called? Campus. Legacy State Campus? Campus. Campus. At yep. Legacy Campus, and we're going to start with roll call, and then we'll go ahead and have the Pledge of Allegiance, and Terry Rhodes is going to lead us in the pledge. So first of all, um, Larry Jepson, board member, is excused. Randall Bagley, board member. Steve Norton, superintendent. Roger Pulsifer, board member. Kathy Christiansen, board member, and Chris Corcoran, board member, excused, although he may show up on phone. We'll see how that turns out. Jeff Nielsen, board member. Terry Rhodes, board member. And Dale Hansen, business administrator. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you. So, um, our we would mission, like, oh, thank you, Terry. Our mission is to educate students for success in a changing world. Thank you. Um, is the director, the choral director for the children here yet? Do, do we have, who we need to have them go right now, or do we need to wait? Uh, wait a minute. Okay, all right. All right, then we would like to go ahead and recognize uh, Green Canyon Marching Band. They were the first place uh, winners of the state band competition. And so um, is, are you saying something, Mr. Beach? <laughs> no, it's principal. Okay, you are? Okay, okay, okay. Principal Swenson is going to give us the scoop. Randall, come up by him, please. This is Randall Beach. He will, do, he will be doing most of the speaking, but there's just a couple things that uh, are highlights that I just want to uh, share. Uh, it was a great representation from all the bands in the Valley that represented the state competition down what they call the Red Rocks Tournament down in St. George. And uh, three of the four bands placed in the top, the top three, and uh, Green Canyon taking, taking state. Uh, it was neat to go on the next day and perform at a regional divi or a divisional uh, tournament, which included uh, many bands from across the western states, and to perform and to uh, uh, receive or get into the top ten and perform there and to receive a placement in the top ten. But the, a couple of things that stood out while I was down there is they were by far the crowd pleaser. And I had several people contact or uh, come up to me because I had a Green Canyon uh, apparel on and just compliment how fun the band was to watch. In fact, I was, in fact my wife was standing outside the, the restroom and, and, the, and, the, and one evening, uh, the last evening, and uh, a group of uh, ladies came by from Fresno and said, we stayed just to see Green Canyon. <laughs> Uh, play uh, because uh, they it, they were just energetic and it was it was uh, fun to see them. This is the the third time we've taken state as a three peat for us, uh, so it was just a, a neat experience and to see th these kids perform at such a high level. And uh, in fact, one one experience that just happened just last month is we had a lady from Utah County. I hope I don't mind sharing this with you. That emailed both of us and she was down at the tournament. That, that second day where we performed at the divisionals. And she felt that, and we, that our scores, or our placement wasn't as high as it should have been. And she has watched, the, watched our band for the past three years. She's a band mom that's been at two different high schools down in Utah County and just went on to share with us, the, uh, her and also others, of, of how they were so impressed. And she 
wanted to come up and uh, she had her family make a trophy and wanted to bring that trophy up to, to Green Canyon on her own uh, to present that to us for the award that we, they felt like we should have gotten. And uh, we tried to talk her out, but she was determined. So the last day, right before Christmas break, she drove all the way up from Utah County, presented this award to, uh, to Randall and the, the group because she was passionate about that. So that was, that was kind of a, a, a fun experience. But uh, also, just on a side note too, uh, our band, uh, our uh, symphonic band was able to perform last week at the state Utah Board uh, School, board. school board and uh, Superintendents Conference, which was uh, out of all the bands in the state was selected to perform. That was kind of a neat experience, and some of the board members were there to see that. But I'm going to let Randall tell you a little bit more about the scoring and uh, also all the people that are here. We have such a great parent support base. It's just unreal. This is probably our one of the best well-organized uh, groups that we have from the parents to all the way from Randall to all the kids and it's just a neat uh, they really carry the banner for not only the district but also the state so Randall I'll turn the time over to you okay well if I have to talk then the students that were able to come have to come stand by me <laughs> so come up here hurry and I see a few staff members you get to come for too Katie <laughs> Are there some band students out in the hall? Come up here, you guys. Please have them all come in because we'd like to get a picture. Okay. Ben, Corey, are there any band students out in the hall? Okay. Great. Uh, we have our first our pet bands playing at the uh, basketball game this evening and quite a few things going on, so I appreciate these students were able to come. We're, we appreciate the school board taking the time to recognize the accomplishment of these students. We just had a wonderful season, as Mr. Swenson said, and it's such a privilege to uh, represent our valley, represent our district. We have such amazing support from uh, the Superintendent Norton and from Mr. Swenson and our other faculty and staff and administrators and all the student body. Just Green Canyon is a really awesome place to be. And it's a privilege to work with these students. They worked very hard this year. Not only did they um, achieve a very high level of excellence, and they were a really great band that everybody loved seeing them perform, but they're really, really great young people, and they represent uh, our school and our community very, very well, and I'm very proud of them. We have a wonderfully talented staff. I'm Katie Anderson, Elena Pedersen, Curtis Pedersen, here this evening, we're very privileged to have a group of adults that dedicate a lot of time to help these students accomplish what they do. So thank you very much, school board, everyone. We appreciate all your support. Thank you. Thank you. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. We do need to get a picture of you, but before we get the picture, are there any of your parents here in the audience? If there, if there is, we would like them to stand because it takes a big sacrifice. Parents, thank you. Okay, if you will scoot a little more to the middle here and put the taller ones in the back. Thank you so much. We are so proud of you and appreciate all that you uh, teachers do and uh, students, you were awesome. Thanks so much. Okay, we are in for a treat. Tonight we are going to have the first grade Chinese singing group do a little performance for us. And this group will be under the direction of Mrs. Tai, and their principal is Principal Amy. Do you need to say anything before we start?
do you need a microphone? Mic. Put that mic in. Thank you so much, children. That was absolutely delightful. And I'm so impressed with your language skills in Chinese. That is amazing. Thank you, Mrs. Lai. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah.
was great. So did you get pictures while they were doing it, or do you want a, do you want a group picture? OK. Oh. Well, maybe do half and half or something. Could you do that? Can everybody scrunch into the middle as tight as can be? Tight, tight, tight. <clears throat> Just Thank a minute. You. Just hang on, just Thank a minute, you. Janda. Hang on. We've got one little gal giving out some Thanks. favors here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And could we recognize the parents? Would you stand, please? Thank you for these delightful children. Dale, will you check and see if we have any public input? See if there's any input. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to our action items. And uh, the first one is a request for the approval of the Providence Elementary TSSA plan adjustment. And Principal Keck will be in charge of that. So, have you had a chance to review it? Is it yeah, on? Will you? Yeah, turn it on and. It'll take it a second. All right, how's that? Perfect. Okay, so good evening. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to review this yeah. already. Do you have any questions? Okay. Anything you want to tell us before we take a vote? No, I don't think so. Okay. If you've had a chance to I look have at a question. Already. Is there a reason that you want to save so much to as Cario? I mean, is that intentional? No. Okay. Um, it's just I didn't have anything okay. specifically to put it towards this year. I figured I'd hang on to it till next year. Okay. So. Okay, I'll take a motion then to approve, let's see, the Providence Elementary TSSA plan adjustment. I move that we approve the Providence Elementary TSSA plan adjustment. I second. All right, any questions or discussion? All right, we'll go ahead and vote then. Okay, all the votes are in and unanimously in favor of the motion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, a request for approval of the adult education policy, and that will be Kurt. What happened to Kurt? He was just, bur <laughs> he was just burning here. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll just hang tight here for a moment. <laughs> so, so fun. 
So is there anything more you'd like to say, Kurt? <laughs> Why, yes, there is. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> So I'm just seeking approval for the changes for the adult ed uh, policy. Okay, I will take a motion to approve the adult education policy. I move that we approve the adult education policy. Second. I second it. Two of them. Roger. Um, okay, any questions about it or concerns? Thank you for combining the two into one. Such a great idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we will go ahead and vote. It's not showing up. Maybe we'll have to take a moral vote. Okay. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no? Okay. That's what I like, a unanimous vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. And now we have a few of the um, reports for tonight. First of all, it's the State of the District Report uh, presented by Tim and Jenda. By the way, it's awesome. All right, somewhere in this room between um, the Chinese choir and stuff is my uh, copy that I had all my little bookmarks in. So I'm gonna do my best to do this uh, ad hoc, but I think we'll do okay. What, are, what is that you're looking for? My report that I'd marked up. <laughs> so is it a book that looks like that? Yeah, yeah, it's just got a bunch of uh, stickies in it, but okay. I'm okay, we're good. So we'd notice if we had it, right? Yeah, you would notice okay. if you had it. So, um, First of all, we just want to um, thank the board for letting us present this State of the District report. Jen and I get the privilege of presenting it, but it really represents um, the work of the entire district to um, accomplish what we do, and all the way from the board, the superintendent, uh, the district administration, to school administrators, staff, students, parents. Um, I did, Jenda did take a challenge. She said, if Kathy can find a grammatical error in this. I'm not uh, quite done, but I haven't okay. found anything yet. All right. She's pretty uh, a stickler for I that thing. Sorry. So. I am sorry to be that person. No, this is a challenge for us. So okay. if we can, if we can make the cut. So well, if it counts, I read the whole thing and didn't find anything. Awesome. So awesome. You're, you're good to go. All right. Why don't you open to page two? Um, we've got some nice fast facts here about the district and what we wanted to point out here was just the effort that our support staff make. When you look at the number of lunches served, the number of students transported, the uh, 2.7 million square feet of facilities that this district maintains on a daily basis to make um, the district function, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. And then to know that we have a single plumber, a couple of electricians to, to manage all of those facilities and, and uh, uh, great lunch staff, great transportation staff. So um, I think it's just a credit to them what they do and what they accomplish to keep the district running. Flip over the page to page five. And we wanted to just point out on this page um, that one of the largest challenges and opportunities, as you'll read in the superintendent's letter, is that we continue to grow as a district at uh, really unprecedented levels over the last few years. And there's some good illustrations there of that growth, over 1,800 students in a five-year period. And then if you just want a snapshot of that growth over the last year, we gave you a chart at the bottom that shows a snapshot from an October 1 to an October 1 and what that does in school populations. And, you know, it would be nice if students came in neat little packages so we could put another teacher in a classroom, but they don't. They come spread across the entire system. And with our um, kindergarten growth leveling off um, the past couple of years, where our kindergarten classes have actually been a little bit smaller than the year before, most of this growth represented is probably from move-ins to the valley. 
that was 537 students this year. So anyway, you can see those. You see North Cash got picked up 124 students this year. Same chart as we had last year on the next page with um, students by community. Um, and then we get into the data um, with regards to how we're doing academically. The data we provide in the state of the district report is really a 30,000 foot view of what we look like as a district. Blake is going to take a few minutes after Jenda and I finish with the state of the district and show you where to find a much deeper district data dive that he's been working on this year that will help you get down at the school level and see how the different schools are doing with regards to um, performance. But we continue to perform at the top of the state. You know, we had all the problems with testing this year, especially in the elementary schools. And yet, if you look at our data, and the data we have here and the data that Blake will show you in a few minutes, we're up in almost every single category despite the, the difficulties in testing this year. And um, continue to do very well across language arts, mathematics, and science. Um, both in, or at all three levels, middle school, uh, or elementary school, middle school, and elementary school. Um, so you can peruse through those and look at those, and then again, Blake will give you some more information. If you flip over to page 16, <clears throat> there is a lot of talk in this state about um, the importance of college and career readiness. And if I think back, I, it's getting further and further behind me in the rearview mirror, but I graduated in 1984. We did not have many opportunities in school when I was in school to participate in college classes while in high school. Uh, we were happy just to get maybe an advanced class, um, which I didn't qualify for. So, But you look at here, this is, this is amazing data. 95% graduation rate, that is the second highest in the state. We're only behind JUAB. Um, we're actually about tied with, with Davis and they have a few more school, schools than we do. Um, that is a great rate. We're getting students to the, to the end of the road. And then as far as concurrent enrollment credits, that's one year worth of concurrent enrollment credits earned in this district. So if you talk about an early college high school, um, we have four early college high schools where our students are able to, to earn college credit. You look down at the advanced um, placement credits earned, 679. And that's a big commitment because those advanced placement cr um, classes take usually two to three, mostly three trimesters to complete. Um, so anyway, very committed as a district. I think um, we have a lot to be proud of there. The next several pages you can look through, um, kind of get enrollments of each of the schools, uh, see the principals. Even though this is looking back, this really represents um, the way the district looks now as far as principals and who's where. So you can look through that. Um, and then you've got the pages that we've put in last year that gives uh, several different departments or programs an opportunity to tell you what they've been up to in the last year, um, all the way from our student support services to our curriculum department, special education, secondary and elementary education, um, as you go through those pages. And then we've added um, a section here. I'm going to let Jenda um, talk about this section here with regards to teachers of the year and then some of the stuff we've been doing on the website and the, and the response we've been seeing to that. So go ahead, Jenda. Okay. Um, just really quickly, we were excited to have an opportunity to do the State of the District again this year. It's a lot of fun to gather together all this information and really have an opportunity to showcase what's happening in our schools and uh, the amazing administration and teachers and all of the, the people that work so hard in our district to make it as successful as it is. And so as a, kind of as a focus this year for our public information office, um, we've been doing the hashtag we are cash and really spotlighting um, individuals in our district who make a difference. And you can see it on this page here with the, the teachers of the year. We wanted to make sure that we included them in our state of the district. But we've also done um, some of the articles that you probably noticed coming out on our website and social media. We've had a real emphasis on individuals and the, the specific things that they are doing to make a difference. And so we've had a chance to spotlight. For example, we did um, Sean Godfrey, who's a teacher out at North Cash, who was a janitor who worked his way up to become a science teacher. A great story. Um, we spotlighted uh, Heritage Elementary's DLI teacher, Marion Diego. And we spotlighted an alumnus from Skyview and um, some 
uh, greeters that were at Cedar Ridge Elementary in the morning. We wanted to get our volunteers. And so we've really been focusing on the people that make our district so important. We, we even had a chance to spotlight um, Deputy Superintendent Mike Lichty, which <laughs> um, it's just really neat and it's a wonderful opportunity, I think, to uh, showcase these people who make such a difference in our district at all levels. Um, and it is, a, it is always what gets the most interest and the most reaction <coughs> from our patrons and our community. When we post them, there's a lot of response to it. And so I just kind of wanted to share that focus with you so you can kind of have your eye out as you look at, at our articles and see what we're, what we're doing there. <coughs> All right, Dale, do you want to um, take a minute and just talk about the, I think it's pages 38, 39, uh, again, this is a 30,000 foot view. It doesn't go into a lot of detail, but <coughs> speak to that a little bit. Okay, great. Yeah, what, what's shown in here is um, first looking at revenues of the school district. Um, and this, this involves everything from debt service to school operations to school lunch to you name it. It's all included. So it's, it's showing that we have a budget of about $214 million. And then the, uh, the detail is broken down as far as percentage of funds that are received locally, which is shown in blue, um, state, which is shown in yellow, and federal, which is in red. Um, and so we do see that we, we do receive a lot of, of state aid um, through the minimum school program and through other restricted programs that are released from the state, uh, making up 56.5% of total revenue. Um, over on the right, uh, again, it focuses showing that we have 71.5% of our budget uh, comprised of salaries and benefits. Typically, that presentation is shown just looking at the general fund alone, where we typically have around 85 to 87% of our budget tied into salaries and benefits. But here, again, it, it, this includes our debt service payments, includes capital projects, school lunch, uh, which typically aren't used in the the pie and dividing out the, the expenditures there. But this looks at the entire operations of the district itself, itself um, showing how those expenditures break out. And I think it's just good information for the public to see what's involved there. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and then as you go, uh, Jen has added some nice pages here on um, community involvement. And we certainly, um, this is I think where I want to highlight um, Jenda's work just on this report and overall in the, in the school district. Um, as she mentioned, we, we do highlight a, stuff, a lot of stuff on our website. And um, I appreciate the fact that she does a lot of work in highlighting people because they are the ones that make the difference in the in the school district and that's our social media websites are up i mean if you look at them from three years ago when we were just pumping out calendars and stuff um, we're getting a lot of of eyes on our website <coughs> and a lot of eyes on our social media platform um, and i think that creates a sense of community um, for us and a sense of trust with our community so she's just done an absolutely fabulous job um, one of the things that you uh, may not be aware of in this report, but every single picture in this report this year is of our students and uh, our staff. There's no stock footage here of somebody in New York City. Um, and Jenda's let out on that. And make, uh, we hired a photographer from Richmond, uh, Sandy DeGasser. And, but Jenda's um, outlined those photo shoots. We just did another one the other day at North Cash. Um, just capturing what's going on in our schools and all of those pictures are playing on our website as you can see uh, on your screens um, we, we use those over and over again highlighting the work and the efforts and and kind of a little flavor of what's going on in our schools so um, Really appreciate her. There is absolutely no way we could put together or I could put together a report like this without Jenna She does all the heavy lifting um, as far as making it look good. She has such a good idea, uh, eye for detail and eye for graphic design. And so appreciate um, the efforts and work that she does for the school district. Do you guys have any questions? I think this is awesome. first class. It really yeah, is. It's awesome. I, I'm way impressed. Yeah. Thank you very That's much for your efforts.
Um, I did um, email Jenda and ask her if I could get eight copies of this so I can give one to each of our legislators. Absolutely, yeah. So yes. um, I'll either personally de de deliver them or send them through the mail. Okay. I've been sending the Friday board, um, what do we call that, report, okay. to them, asking them, do you want me to keep doing this or is this driving you nuts? And the, it's been very positive oh, about getting it. They want it. Great. So I'll just mail one of these and, and they can and look at it. At we will leisure. email this out to all of our staff, uh, all of our parents, so that it'll be out in the community. We won't, you know, we're nice. not going to just do the printed version. I, I was so. just wondering on the financial information, since nobody in the public really gets it, um, is there a chance of putting something like this in the newspaper? It's a small population that takes the newspaper anymore, but I'm just, maybe some of the people yeah. who write letters to the editor complaining about where <laughs> does their tax money go? Yeah. If they saw something like this, it might be helpful. Yeah. I don't know, you guys can decide. Just Yeah, we can look and see if we can do a feature piece. And so that would be great. Okay, anybody else? Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. She oh, sorry, Terry. Um, I do, um, the state of the district is great for, um, PR, but, um, we've had a lot of discussion, um, recently about, um, advertising value for investment, um, to the public, and I wonder if we could include some of that stuff this next year from that data dive that um, that is the next part of this presentation because some of that is pretty amazing, um, especially like ACT scores in our district um, and number of AP uh, credits earned, things like that um, are pretty amazing, especially when we're number seven in the nation as a state. That's pretty great um, return on investment and I think that would be super, just little bites like that, right. that would be super helpful to see, or for the public to see in really small bites. Yeah. Or like scholarship money yeah. awarded for, you know, because oh, of all the great things that are happening. I mean, when, when uh, the principals announce it in their awards meetings every spring, I'm just floored because when I graduated like you, Tim, I, I mean, I was lucky to get out and then to get, you know, to get into college, but uh, there's some amazing things happening and a lot of money at stake there. Yeah. So you're usually north of $2 million. Yeah. All I mean, that's, that's very impressive yeah. to hear something like yeah. that. Do you off the top of your head, either one of you know, the increase um, percent or number of hits on the web page or the Facebook page or this year versus last year? I don't have it off the top of my head, but I could definitely get for you. Okay. Yeah, she did a graph for me last year that showed number of uh, likes and hits mm -hmm. on art, different articles, and we broke down the top articles, and we watched that because we want to know what kinds of articles people are interested in reading, and it's definitely about people. Right. Sure. Want articles about mm -hmm. people. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Facts and figures don't, you know, get to their hearts like um, their neighbor or something good happening or a first grade Chinese choir singing. Or, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's it. Go ahead. That's why I wonder if like on the um, mobile pictures of the website, like if we just had a bite right there that said, did you know that Utah's number seven in the nation for um, AP credits earned? Yeah, no, that'd be great. Some did you know facts or yeah. something like that? Yeah, be fantastic. And we apologize that this report is coming out so late. Um, part of that is due to we couldn't get a hold of the achievement data until really late in the year. Um, Blake's office was working hard to get that, and that's why his data dive um, kind of followed behind too, because he worked just as fast as he could to get that data kind of in a meaningful format so that um, you guys could go over it. So. I'm going to turn the time over to him to kind of walk you through this data dive a little bit and let you see um, his work, but you could spend quite a bit of time in there. But very well done, you guys, mm -hmm. honestly. It's Thank great. Jenda, I like how it's organized. It's just it's right so on. It's so cheerful. Mm -hmm. It's so cheerful. It is. That's why I think more people need to see it. We need to get it out there somehow, somewhere, more. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you. I appreciate just taking a minute, Tim asked me to, to show a project that um, assessment worked on. And this is the work of the board, our superintendent, our district, our principals, and our teachers that every day have those children that they try to move a little closer and a little closer and a little closer. And over a whole lot of little closer, they end up being successful. But we want to look, and you guys have mentioned some of it, but what is our district like? You know, we know within our state, but outside, but what are our kids doing and where do they fit that way? And that's kind of where the project started out. And you can find it as, as Tim went to it on our district website and you go to department, it's under assessment. And I'm only gonna talk about this first, uh, this page that's up now, a little bit of the organization and the data is there behind it. And so it started with, as a system, our goal is to graduate as many kids as we can. And so you saw and Tim talked about that 95% of our kids graduate. And sure enough, that is second in the state. And, um, you have a much smaller system, and that's that's a lot of pride in that. But then, what are our graduates like that we're sending out? What do we know about them? And so we started to look at some of this data and had to do with the graduating class and our ACT scores. Where are we? And that's when it compares our our district, our state, our nation, and composite scores in ACT. If it's a point something bigger or smaller, that's a lot. And we're a little above the state on those, and you can go through this later and look, but we're above, um, we're about with the nation. If you, Tim just scrolls up a few pages, you'll see that we have graduation there, and it shows where cash is. What else about our graduates did we want to look at? Well, our current enrollment and our AP. And it'll show if you keep scrolling down some trends there with our ACT over the various tests over uh, five years, and you can see where we're at and where our composite's at. Um, you also see then AP exams. And you said it very well, Terry, about where we're at, and that we have over 76% of our kids that take an AP class, get a three or better. And that's incredible, and that's not, I mean, I taught AP for a while, it's just not that person. There's many people that help that kid go through. And we looked at our concurrent because sure enough way for a kid to get there is through concurrent. So it showed you how many concurrent we have and, and the number of, uh, of credits we have and from what institution. And then our kids also, as you start looking at the state uh, testing system, they take an 11th grade ACT, which is different of course from them taking uh, the ACT that maybe kids take several times. It's given to the vast majority, almost all of our kids here in March. And you can see the scores there and it shows it over some years. Um, and then our kids go in ninth and 10th grade, they take Utah Aspire Plus. And the goal of that is that it's more formatted like the ACT and eventually it'll provide a predictive score to see how a kid's doing. So you don't have to wait till a kid is in 11th grade to say, are you really, really college ready? You'll get a real good read on them in ninth or 10th grade to see how they are. That test is very similar to that. And then if you notice that the connection with everything on this is of course the Utah Corps. And that's what our teachers are charged to teach and hopefully get their kids to, to proficiency and mastery. And then in this report, in this study we did, we listed the, the, the high schools with their um, Utah, um, their Utah Aspire Plus and showed them with the various tests showed, and they measure it two different ways in the state because if one wasn't good enough, I guess we need two, but they show with benchmark and you're thinking anything above an 18 is pretty good. And then it also shows it with percent proficient. And this report will show both of those that you can look at and see what our kids, they, are getting ready to go to 11th grade to be college and career ready, as Tim <coughs> talked about, as they leave high school. And then, and if you just want to scroll down through some of that, Tim, just so I can kind of show you this graph here, I, I, and there's a graph for our high schools, our middle schools, and each of our elementary. And I think this is an incredible graph. On the left side, it shows the proficiency level of that school and the test up there now is language art, I mean the graph 
So you can see in language art, you can see where each school was proficient and proficiency, of course, that's what we'd like our kids to get through. But if we have a kid that starts academically way behind and we're pushing them and trying to help them increase and increase their learning, on the right side of this, it shows their growth. And so if you get a school that maybe the proficiency is a little bit lower, but their growth is really, really good, well, they're doing a pretty good job with their kids because of that. And you'll see these are in there for each of the tests of language arts, uh, math, and science that um, are in this report. And you can look at them and just get a snapshot of where they're at that way. And then we went down and put in uh, a front page of a report that we gave to each of the schools and principals and it had teachers' names and what they did, so of course we didn't put it on this, but it's the front page of about seven or eight pages that show where their kids were with Utah Aspire Plus. And so you can see that there with that data story because numbers should tell a story and have a narrative uh, with it. And then of course we move down, and if you scroll down you'll see um, our middle schools. And I think this graph was in the state of the district report, but to me what I always look for, and I've been told it by people who know a lot more about this than me, that it's fair to compare a cross test, even though we started with the new rights test, you can kind of look at it to sage, but the plus or minus, and we're plus between that orange graph, which is a state, and our district. And if you see the state drop off some, well, naturally you'd think maybe our district would decline, but there are areas that the state declines a little bit that our district increases. And you can kind of do that and look at that and see the plus and kind of track some of the progress we're making. And in there, this is language arts, the next one is math. Um, and, you know, there's some great numbers there that show that gap between where the state average is and where our kids are. And then you see science. Um, that's also, and then we did the same thing for middle schools. We gave them a page, one page in this, and then also gave them a report that showed their kids and that. And the yellow just highlights some of the things that some of the schools have done. You could look. And then we did the same butterfly graphs for our middle school. So you can see the language arts, the proficiency and growth. You can see it in math, language arts, and science. And in working this backwards from high school to elementary, it was that idea, this is what the kids are doing as they're leaving. Let's kind of trace them back. And we know that they get this start as they learn to read. I mean, what a blessing that kids can learn to read and do um, that way. So we went, and this is our elementaries, and it'll show the elementaries over um, three years with the same type of a graph, with a pl and you can look at that the gap between the state and our district and see as a snapshot what the kids are learning. And then, you know, elementary is a little more, the graphs are a little more cluttered. But one of the cool things I think that's on there, if you just stop there, Tim, either one of them's good. You can see the state proficiency line there. And it's like 47.7 if I can read it from here. And then you can see our district line. And our district line is, that's a pretty aggressive line um, where it is. And you can see that where our schools are with, if you look up the orange and the blue there a little bit. And then it goes through and the last part of this shows that individual report for each school and each elementary again has a graph of their grades and their teachers and how they did um, on rights. Does show the proficiency and the growth um, on a graph um, there that shows it again. And like I say, it's interesting to see some of those that um, growth is really, really good and some of their proficiency. Others, we got good growth and you know the proficiency will come. So that was kind of the goal behind when we started putting this together was, what are we like, who are we, and what can we tell from it? And so you can look at that and go through it um, I don't know if you have questions now. It's just kind of an addendum to some of the things that Tim said, or a little more story about who we are as a school system and who we are as, uh, as our kids leave and graduate when they go off to college. This is an awesome mm -hmm. report. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Blake. 
Well, I got to thank Robin Hedgecock too, who, I mean, don't think I did those graphs. That would be her. We put it together and it, it just kind of grew. We kind of knew what we wanted, but it took some time. And I know we're mid-January. Well, hopefully assessment numbers come out a lot sooner next year because this would be benefit to everybody if it was way earlier in the year. And that would be our goal in subsequent years to do that. Do Where are we going to see all of these? Like we have the booklet, but not all of this is in that booklet. Is it going to just be online? Oh, these are on the web page. If you, they're, they're off our district web page off of, uh, right now, if you go to our district web page and go to departments, and underneath assessment, there's a button that says data dive. And okay. this is this. Um, they're off of it that way. So you can see it and the public can see it and anybody. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. How Any other does, questions? How does ACT determine the college readiness benchmark? Does anyone know? It's determined by if they believe in a college entrance class, so like the beginning English class or math class, that that kid would get a B or a C in it. That's how they've determined it. They've done the data out from there. So is it just by survey questions to the students? No, they, well, somewhat, yes. At and the beginning where the students answer all the questions about themselves? Yeah, there's somewhat of that. And then just over time as they've gathered data. And with a pretty degree of certainty, they're good at what they do that way and pretty reliable. Um, as they said, them um, the ACT website, I mean, they keep growing as a group and things that they have that way are incredible, um, a tool and help for us that way. That's just impressive. Our district is impressive in that area as well. Um, as I studied the, as I studied your report that um, the college, how many of our students meet that college um, readiness benchmark is, wow, it's really amazing. Yeah, we, we do we have great people helping and great kids and great families and everything that way, but yes. Other questions? Thank you. Thanks for your Thank work. You. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll move down to the report on sex education policy change. Okay. And that's uh, somewhere with my other book as well, <laughs> but you have it online, so this is going to be relatively easy. It's just an adjustment in the red that's on your um, agenda item there. So the permission slip for students um, to, to participate in sex education instruction has a, an element in there that says that they will be able to participate in alternative assignments if they choose not to participate in here and how they'll, they'll, they'll be required to complete those alternative assignments. And <clears throat> the teachers felt like they wanted that language to be reflected on the district policy as well as on the permission form. Does that happen so, very often? Uh, that... No. We have so few opt-outs uh, in this district statistically. Um, usually when a parent has a concern about sex education instruction, they approach the teacher Usually when the teacher sits down with them, walks them through the materials that they'll be covering, um, most parents will say, oh, great, thank you. That's, that's all I needed to know. Some will want to take responsibility for teaching those things to their uh, children themselves, and so the teachers will often provide the materials. And then once in a while, we'll have some students that will opt out, and so we just have them participate in another assignment. So. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? 
Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, let me see. Okay, so um, Mike is going to tell us a little bit about the Pathways program. And um, this is based on kind of a little interesting interaction I had with one of the administrators at the university. We were talking about student education and we both kind of came to this same point of not all students really um, are successful in going to college. And so we were talking about Bridgerland and what a great program, great school that was for those students. And then this person said, well, we have some kind of a program up here where the, um, the hours that they spend at Bridgerland can transfer over to um, credit at the university, which I'd never heard about before. And so when I contacted Mike, thinking I was really giving him some good insight into what was going on, he helped develop the program, along with some of the folks from USU, BTEC, uh, Logan School District, and what's the other one? Um, Box Elder. And Box Elder. Yeah. So since I was not familiar with this, I just asked him if he just kind of explained this a little bit to everyone so we all know what this program is if you haven't heard it before. Okay? And I won't take a lot of time. I'll go over this very quickly. But um, I'm just going to start with a slide, uh, the career pathways that we have established in the state of Utah. And you can, you can see the different pathways that we have and then the different courses that are underneath each of those pathways. And our whole focus um, in secondary career and technical education is to identify courses and pathways so that students just aren't wandering all over the place. They can pick something that they really have an interest in and be able to focus on it and take the courses from our high schools and then they can continue on with those courses to Bridgerland. And what happens here at Bridgerland, it, this has been a process for about the past five or seven years when we worked with Utah State and Bridgerland in our Bear River region, our high schools, that we always saw Bridgerland as a dead end for students. And we wanted to, we weren't getting the best of the best students there because it was a dead end. And so our whole focus was to let a student be able to come to Bridgerland, earn that skill, get that technical knowledge, and either at that point jump into the workforce or, and I'll explain to you here in a minute, they can take what they've earned at Bridgerland and transfer it to Utah State to get an associate's degree or even take that associate's on to a, a bachelor's degree. So no longer is Bridgerland a dead end. And when you start looking at the, all the different careers in the workforce out there that we have, the, the bachelor's of science degrees, all the jobs out there, there's less than 30% that require that kind of a degree. The other 70% are these technical specialty types of licenses and, and programs where they earn a very good salary uh, if they get in and they get trained the right way. So that's our pathways. The, um, the partnership, and I'm going to run you through this website in just a minute. We've, we put the whole link through the Bridgerland website, and I'll, I'm going to bring this up right now and just show you exactly how it works, the website. So this is very interactive. And so it starts off here, and here's the heading, Pathways from High School to University. And I do need to add one more thing. The change in the president of Utah State when President uh, Cock Cockett, I guess, have always have a hard, I want to put an R in there, but I don't think there's an R in there, <laughs> you know. Her, she was the one who finally opened the door at Utah State for this to happen. Because Utah State was always the one dragging their feet on making this pathway link all the way up. And the reason why the door opened is her son was heavily involved in career and technical education, and he got a great education at Bridgerland, had a great job, and because of what he wanted and what she saw her son gain, she was totally on board to make this possible for all kids. Because her son didn't know what he wanted to do. 
But once he got to Bridgerland, got into a skilled area, opened his eyes on what he wanted to do, and he finished up uh, going back to Utah State, finishing a degree, and going right back to the skilled area that he was trained in and doing very well as a career. So I've got to give her credit for making this happen. So how does it work for high schools? Right there, it gives a little blurb that students, you do have to pass uh, classes with a certain grade, and all of our CTE classes have what's called a skill test. You have to be able to pass that skill test also. And we, three times a year, every trimester, students are taking these skill tests. And then once that happens and the students are successful in those classes at Bridgerland, everything that a student does in a high school, Bridgerland will accept into one of their 900 hour programs if they've met the criteria of 80% and passed the skill test. And we have a lot of students who meet that criteria. And Bridgerland is just a great partner to work with. So the key is transferring everything you did at Utah, uh, at our high school, Bridgerland accepts it, and then they keep working on that 900-hour certificate. Then you get down to the associates, then you can, fi once you finish your 900 hours at Bridgerland, then at that point, you can take that, um, that certificate, and now it's, Utah State will accept it into an applied science or general technology type career and there's the first 30 credits automatically granted by Utah State. That's halfway through an associate's degree. So a student can take that and just keep building. And then when you get to the bachelor's degree, Bridgerland has, we've put together the link to programs with Utah State, Weber State, and Utah Valley. Utah Valley's not quite on yet, but they're really close to accepting some of these programs that we've been working on. So what are the programs? Right here in the high school, these are all the different types of programs. These are big, big bullet type courses because there's lots of sub courses under every one of those. These are the ones that our students are taking that they can then transfer to Bridgerland. Then once those classes at, at the high school can fall into any of these 900 hour programs at Bridgerland right in there and it's whatever the focus is that, that student has. Now, the key is we don't have the agreement with higher education for every one of these programs, but we're getting there, all right? And the ones that we have linked at this point that can transfer to Utah State are general business, design and creative arts, technology uh, systems, and allied health systems. Those are the ones that we currently have in place, but working all the time to get more and these, more and more of those linked to higher education. Here's the programs exactly and where they're at. Utah State has the technology and engineering, technology systems at Utah State, nursing at Weber State, automotive at Weber State, and then coming on board with UVU is criminal justice that's coming. So it's all linked, it's all in place, and it's just growing. So students can jump on and off their academic highway at any time and, and be in a valuable work place. And the trend that really happens is you see the, one of these students who earn one of these associate or 900 degrees and they're working with a, a high level employer here in the Valley. Now that employer says, we're gonna send you back to college and we're gonna pay for your tuition. You just keep working for us. That's, what, that's the trend, that's what's happening. They finish that bachelor's degree and they bring them right back. Now they're in one of their upper level, upper level positions. A, a great employee is valuable to any business here in the Valley. Um, last thing I'm gonna show you, every year the state produces a report for every region, I mean every district on how, the, how they're doing in coursework. So we have, over 5,000 students enrolled in CTE courses. Our graduation rate, if, if, if a student is in a, as a concentrator involved in a CTE, the state gave us a 99.2% graduation rate if they're involved in CTE and pathways. It just happens. They're more focused on in their uh, graduation. And it also gives their um, 
college and career ready score if they're involved in CTE pathways. And the other additional information, you know, when Tim showed you the over 3,000 credits earned in concurrent enrollment, well, just about 2,000 of those were out of CTE classes. The, um, we had, these are our seventh graders participating in college and career awareness. So I gave our counselors a challenge a couple of weeks ago because every year that puts out, the state puts out a, <coughs> opportunity for scholarships for CTE students. And out of the 99, our district got one of them because not enough effort was put in by our counselors to get more of our students involved in that. So we have a challenge. We want more of that to happen with our students. <coughs> Here's our top pathways that our students are really serious about in our district right there. We have 99 students last year <coughs> involved in internships. We want to double that. And the state's putting more and more focus on students being involved in their junior and senior year in internships and work-based learning experiences. So we're, we're starting to put a lot of focus in that area. And uh, the last thing I'll share with you, like I said, all of our CTE classes have skill tests and you have to have an 80% or higher to actually earn the certificate. 5,000 were earned by our students, but we also have third-party certificates where if a student takes these classes right here, the Microsoft classes and the other ones that are listed there, just under 1,500 of those third-party certificates earned. You take one of those to an employer and they'll guarantee you a job, one of those third-party certificates. So that's our pathways. Do we have freshmen who take these classes, or does this start at a higher level? Well, the freshmen can do that, but we want to get them started in their very basic programs to begin with so that they have a good footing underneath them. So they take out. the CTE classes at the high school? Oh, yeah, they're, they're involved in CTE as ninth, the ninth graders. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you know, Mike, it's interesting because uh, we've been working with Bridgerland to develop their electronics uh, program. Uh, because the labor market is so tight, we've been we recruit from San Diego and uh, ISU for technicians, and so we're trying to build our farm club here, where uh, the students take these classes at Bridgerland. We work with them for internships, that type of thing. But uh, technicians now the wages the wages have risen dramatically, and uh, there's a lot of good opportunities there for, you know, if someone doesn't want to go on and get a, a, a a bachelor's degree or something, they can uh, get a technician, to, you know, qualifications for a technician and make a really good wage. So uh, we, good we're involved wage. with them quite a bit on that. Yeah. Do you feel like the counselors promote this well with the students? We're, we're working on that, on, on that all the time. You know, the, it, whether we like it or not, if you ask a parent, what's my student going to do after high school, what do they say? Go to college. Mm -hmm. Go to college. Mm -hmm. Well, after the first year, 50% of them are out of college because that's really not what their interest was. Right. Now they're scrambling to come back to go through one of these technical areas, which is fine. It's, we're just trying to catch them a little bit earlier and give them an opportunity to start in it and then branch up to higher ed. Any other questions? Thank you. I'm happy to know the details of that. Did anybody know about Pathways? I did. You did? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and you knew? Because yeah. yeah. you work with it. You yeah. did too? Mm -hmm. I guess I was just not paying attention in one of the lectures. All right. Um, we will go ahead and move on down then to our board committee reports. Um, did all of you get my message to pick out something that would take two or three minutes to share of what you learned? And I don't know. Steve and Dale, if you want to, I didn't send it to you, but if you've got something that comes to mind, feel free to take a turn. We'll start with you, Randall. Yes, I was very impressed. I thought this was a wonderful conference. Uh, the keynote speaker I thought was great. The uh, six classes I went to, I thought were, five I thought were exceptional, and one was fair. It was all right, but uh, I thought, I just uh, took a few notes here and there. I'm not going to really focus on one, but I found just a few quotes and things I learned, and maybe I could just read a few thoughts that uh, 
I learned here, and the first two are a little concerning here. The first one I learned is in one class they said that overall reading scores in the U.S. have not increased in the past 20 years, and that kind of surprised me. Uh, another thing I learned that was uh, interesting and kind of sad is that trauma and adverse childhood experiences physically change the brain, and many children cannot learn because of that, and they just can't. But there was also a lot of uh, positive things I learned from this. Uh, just a few uh, sentences and quotes. One says, those who succeed tend to know how to lead and how to lead themselves. Success does not lead to happiness. Happiness leads to success. Positive people are 31% more productive, three times more creative, and 39% more, more likely to live to the age of 94. Uh, train yourself to look for the positive. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I thought that was good. And, and that was the focus of a lot of these sessions was just how we're going to help these kids with suicide and depression. And they're doing some wonderful things with their program. A teacher's job is not to teach, but to ensure learning. I like that. Um, and this is from, come from the keynote speech. Uh, had a lot of good quotes in that. This one says, a hero is not an ordinary person doing extra extraordinary things. A hero is an extraordinary person who d decides not to be normal. Did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And nobody notices normal. The past is not a place of residence. It's a place of reference. See things as they are see things not as they are but as they could be i'm proud of you is the second most important words besides i love you and never say i've made it because you haven't <laughs> so those are just some things I would awesome like. do you want to share anything well i'll, I'll wait until okay. we go ahead roger okay i uh one that i went to was uh what you need to know about late start high school students now representative harrison is trying to get that thing going. Uh, and what she's concerned about is, uh, she doesn't want schools to start any before 8.30. And it's just, you know, I, I go back to when I went to school. We started at quarter to nine, I think, didn't we, Mike, the Skyview? Uh, but at the same time, we had to get on a bus at 7.30 to get to Skyview in time. Uh, and I thought it was quite interesting, some of the facts that they were telling us about uh, early morning s starts as far as school goes. Uh, approximately one third of our lives are spent sleeping. Uh, that's 25 years in a 75 year old life or 9,125 days. Uh, even if we change the time of school starting, what's gonna happen? Uh, some of the facts that they had 70% of teens text between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. I thought that was real interesting. I don't know where they got that data, but this comes from a, uh, her name was uh, Dr. Troxel. Uh, but that's a lot of time. I thought all parents shut their phones off at 10 o'clock, but that's quite a few hours that their kids are spending on the phone. Uh, so, they also mentioned that, you know, some people said, well, we have to have early starts so we can do athletics and stuff. And more injuries happen to athletics, athlete people than you would think because they're sleep deprived. So you have to look at that too. And uh, is that where we're getting it all? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Representative Harrison gets passed here. Uh, she wants to be after 8.30, and I don't know how, you know, that would cause a nightmare with busing and stuff, but we may have to be focused on that sooner or later. Okay. So I thought it was quite interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Jeff. Uh, two I went to, well, I went to all of them. They were, I thought they were very good classes. There were a couple I wasn't as excited about. But uh, the interesting ones were, um, the compensation for teachers. Um, and I think the district does a good job of, it's not just about the salary, but it's the whole package. You know, you've got your benefits and 
but even more so than that, there's the intangibles that you can't really attach a price to that uh, the, the environment in the district and that type of a thing. And I think the district has done a good job of um, making that part of the package, creating an environment where it's not solely about a salary. Uh, another one that I liked was um, the, uh, there was the one about personal leadership skills, which I thought was really good. Uh, the one that talked about happiness, that was a, yeah. That was very intriguing, uh, I like and I ended up going to that TED talk that they talked about, and uh, that was pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, Randall talked a little bit about that, but uh, the the school finance one also. Uh, the thing that I gained from that one was Dale's doing a great job of <laughs> what we're supposed to be looking at every month. So I have a great degree of confidence of, of what's going on with that. So. Uh, I, not that I learned a lot, but I was very confident in what uh, Dale's doing. So, anyway. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terry. Um, I went to all the legal classes and the risk management, and some were really good. <laughs> Others, kind of so-so. But um, one that I really enjoyed was called School Boards are Making an Impact on Student Achievement. And um, Canyon, there were representatives from Canyons and Jordan School District there talking about different things that their boards had um, initiated change in their district. And one of the, th the ideas that I really liked was um, one from Jordan where they've created a teacher grant program for teachers to earn up to $5,000 additional pay in a year for after contract time, for, out of, uh, for extra work outside contract time. Like, and, and they have an application, a one-page application that the teachers have to fill out who are interested in earning that. Um, and write their idea for what they want to do to improve their classroom, their school, or the district with their work outside of the contract time. And um, they said they have about um, 45 teachers who have taken advantage of that in the couple of years that since they instituted that, and they have a few more every year who are interested. Um, but it gives, their, it gives those teachers who want more work and want to earn some more money that opportunity. And so I'm really intrigued by that idea. Um, but my favorite quote of, of all was um, the end, um, uh, the last speech that, oh, what's the president's name? Oh, Rick. Rick? No, he's the outgoing now. Oh, oh. Hmm. Your favorite person. My McKay. favorite. McKay. McKay. Oh, McKay. McKay. <laughs> <laughs> um, when in McKay's closing speech, he said, we are in the most optimistic job ever as school board members because every decision we make is to help somebody somewhere. And he's right. I've been thinking about it ever since he said that. And he's really right because we just have the best job ever because everything we do is to try and help somebody. Yeah, good point. Dale, anything you want to comment on? Yeah, one one class I went to was on student fees, and it was it was interesting how they said that we have kind of a dilemma we're working through right now with uh, um, requirements for students to do things on the internet and have computer access. Um, and that we have to be very careful not to structure our curriculum so that it's required that for students to receive the highest test score need to have access to the internet at home or computer uh, availability because it, it may become a, a waivable expense where districts would then be required to provide for students that internet access so that they have an even playing field with those that have that available. So I thought that was kind of an interesting discussion, but uh, so we have to be careful in our in our curriculum development that we don't we don't include that in the requirements for students that it necessitates they have online access at home, or it may come back and bite us quite a bit financially. Okay, Steve. 
I, I, I'm just really impressed that Terry would be quoting uh, <laughs> McKay. Uh, it would be more impressing it, if I did. Uh, yeah, I, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I would much rather be quoting Terry, <laughs> and I wish she was the one up there giving oh, that no speech. Uh, but uh, I went to the salary compensation one, and I was uh, very impressed with the amount of work that a, a young man down in Wayne County, who's the acting superintendent, the business manager, a teacher, and for his church, a bishop, and he's got a family, and he did a deep dive on salaries. And uh, we are very competitive, but I am a, I'm, I'm just really concerned that we'll lose that ability to be competitive if we start basing salaries on local property taxes. And that's kind of where we're headed, and I don't like that. And uh, I'm hoping we can head that off. Um, that's, a, that's a real concern. Uh, I was thoroughly enamored by our uh, opening speaker, and we are working diligently to get him to the district next year. He's a costly little fellow, um, <laughs> but I think he's worth it. And we're doing some uh, communication with Nebo School District, because they did have him. They had him, and that's where I think the USBA uh, got their contact information. Um, and they used it as a full year of, of uh, they had t-shirts printed for everybody and, and uh, really did a nice job. but. Um, I, I was thoroughly impressed, and I would like our teachers and our staff to hear what he has to say. I think it fits in nicely with what we're doing as a district. I think, um, I think it would be very valuable to, to have that experience for all of our staff. So we're working on that. We'll let you know how that goes. Um, one comment back to Terry's uh, comment. It has nothing to do with the conference. Um, we have very few opportunities to compare ourselves with how we're doing nationally. We are doing really well when we compare ourselves with the state of Utah. Um, but one of the only areas we have is the ACT test. And, and uh, even though we are doing well, I think one of the, the goals that our district ought to work on is having a higher percentage of our kids ready for college. Whether they go there or not, doesn't matter. But if they could make that choice based on they're ready and able to go, uh, that's, a, that's an area that I think we could focus on as a district and, and uh, become more competitive with, across the country and with students across the world. And the ACT is about the only place we can go where we can see how our kids stack up against other kids in this and what we're doing. Uh, we're doing well. I think there's always room for improvement, and we'll be striving to look at that data. That's a lot of information mm -hmm. <laughs> that you had presented to you tonight, and, and it would, needs to be um, taken to our principals, and principals need to look at schools that are doing better than they are, and we need to learn from our colleagues. And we don't do a very good job of that in, in education. We never have. Uh, the teacher next door has is, is, uh, always been a mystery to the teacher teaching right next to them. We, we just haven't had a culture of sharing because we do it behind closed doors. If we were raising potatoes, you, the potato farmer who plants spuds and gets 300 acre sacks per acre, and the guy next door only gets 100, he's over asking that guy, what, what are you doing? And we need to have more of that going on. And we need to have our principals asking other principals, why are things different in your school? And just a quick s summation of what we saw tonight, there's some things that uh, if I was a principal of one of our high schools, I would say, why is this the case? and we need to have that discussion. But we are a really good district, but we can be a better district.
Okay, thank you. So the one that you haven't talked about that I went to was the School Land Trust Program. And they just uh, talked about a few new things that I mentioned to Mike. And as we get closer to the School Land Trust, I'll talk, bring them up with you because we'll probably just forget them at this <laughs> point of the time. So let's go ahead and move on then to our um, board president report. And uh, Carolyn posted the board committee assignments. They're exactly the same for all of you as they were um, last year. And Chris just said he would go ahead and take uh, over Alan's assignment. So if anybody has any problems with that, let me know, okay? A couple of other things I just wanted to mention. For those of us who uh, need to run again, the registration is from March 13th to March 19th, and two of those days are a weekend. So um, what I have heard is the faster we get in and sign up, the more it might discourage other people when they see who's already on the list to sign up. So 13th is a Friday. But you can't register until the 13th. Right, so. yeah. And it is $50 um, to register. It used to be 25, now it's 50. And let me see. Oh, uh, we are going to be having the, the Saturday, legislators reports coming up uh, Terry thinks it's probably February 1st but she has not been able to find it where it's posted and I have no idea so I just asked her but we're thinking it's the first does anybody know for sure the first one um, is it too early to do assignments on that which week you take mm -hmm. let's wait till next week when everybody's here okay oh <coughs> good point in two weeks okay <coughs> yep we will do that thanks and let me see if there's anything else. Oh, okay, in April, we have our board meeting on uh, April 9th, but that's the NSBA conference. So we could go with the second. NSBA is the third through the seventh. Oh, it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so on our list, then it's wrong. So, okay, we're okay then. Okay. Thank you. Got that straightened out. I think that's everything that I have. Okay. Um, Superintendent, do you have anything? Uh, nope. What about the petition for oh. consolidation? Did we get that report out? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, we got, got it. it out. It's missing page 17. I've been looking to figure out. I, I just got a page from 17. Who did the report was what I was wondering before. Okay, so he's in the education department. He works for the Center for Growth and Excellence. Yeah. So he's not at the university anymore? No. He no. is, but that's well, his department. Yeah, there's a, there's a research uh, wing there that's starting recently. It works for them. Okay. It's, it's a, right now, I think it's a, a, a concern for, a parent, uh, for some patrons who are trying to get enough signatures to force it to go to a, an election. Doesn't include you guys, you don't have to make a decision. Logan doesn't have to make a decision. You two boards could make that decision and say that you're gonna consolidate. But I would just let, uh, let it- Run its course. Let it run its course, see where it goes. Okay. And it's interesting to see how many times that has happened over the last well, yeah, and they counted one in the, the study yeah. that it was done in, in 13 or 14. There was talk about right. consolidation, but it never got to the point where there was a, a real study and, and anything that led to much. So uh, it's just one of those things that come up on occasion, mm -hmm. and there must be some people interested. We don't think the, the report uh, is... Uh, I don't know how to say this. Well founded. We don't think it's really accurate, and we don't, and we don't, we think they. Some it's of the very speculative in some places. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but uh, if you get approached, just you know, I think you just say, "I've read the, I've read it, and uh, we're waiting to see if there's enough patron interest that it would go to a vote." But we, as a board, uh, have not. It's not one of our agenda items at this point. Okay. That's all I would say. Do you want it to um, tell everybody what happened with the, um, 
base football. Yeah, we're going to be bringing to you some additional wording on trips. Uh, we just felt, in fairness, uh, we didn't, we couldn't, in in all practicality. <laughs> Uh, have the wrestlers be able to go and, and the baseball team not be able to under the, the guidelines that we were operating. We just got ourselves into a situation where we think if we had additional wording in that policy, and Mike's going to bring some additional wording to the policy, but they will be going uh, down to that to baseball tournament. And I, I, I want the parents who came and, and presented to the board, I thought they we're about the, the, the very best, uh, most articulate and reasonable parents that I've ever seen come and present to a board. And, and that goes a long way, I think, in, in trying to work together. And um, hopefully we, we can get it such that principals will know and make that first call that they don't send something forward that doesn't meet the guidelines. So okay. that's our hope. All right, does anyone have anything else? Do you have anything? <laughs> All right, thank you, board. It was fun spending time with you. Uh, that's always a fun trip when we go down there. Yeah. And to be with the spouses is always really fun, too. Appreciate all that you do. And My I'm mouse has apparently run away, so if you find see a mouse <laughs> anywhere. Uh, oh, I. <laughs> stop it and bring it back to me. Um. Uh, is there is, is there something I can do to do a better job as the region rep for USBA? This I time. thought you did great last time. Yeah, I like the yeah. the mm -hmm. summary emails. Those yeah, are the, I do too. the best. So those don't annoy you? No. Okay. No, they're very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and thank you to our district for the great Save work. Save me a seat when I'm late. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, dear yeah. boss. All right. Um, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>